All right, so this this chapter, chapter nine, intro to network security. Um, it's 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 kind of like it's very different from everything we've talked about from chapter one till uh, chapter one to eight. Um, but it's an important subject. But I'm going to say basically, if you're if you're on the sysadmin track, then we're going to cover this topic, or I guess the whole course for IT443 is basically network security. Well, network security one. Um, network security two, so network security one, 443, that is basically defending networks. Network security two, that is like a hacking class. Right, so if you haven't done that, you're going to do that down the road, especially if you're in the sysadmin track. So this is like an intro to your next course, um, the, uh, network security. It's just an introduction. Uh, it's You go into more detail when you get into the IT443 class. All right, so... Well, let's just get into it now. So the first question I have, when we look at this topic of security or you know network security, uh, why do we even need security at all in the first place? Sinan, what do you think? Why do we need security? And then pe people who shouldn't have access to information would have access to information. Say it again. Um, so, uh, information is protected. Yeah. You, no, the first thing you said is that people who shouldn't have access, right? Yes. Okay. So people who shouldn't have access. So that's interesting that you say that. So the next question I have is who are these people? Who are the people who shouldn't have access? Uh, let's go to, let's go to wheel for that. People, people shouldn't have people who shouldn't have access. That's why you're trying to. That's why security is important. So, who are these people? What do they look like? What do they sound like? If I went across the street, would I you're run into these people? people? You're asking about the people that shouldn't have access. Well, who are the people we're trying to protect our security from, right? Um, I guess that depends on like the nature of the network, like if it's a bank's network, you're protecting your client's banking information from potential hackers or people who may want to like steal their identity or something along those lines. Hackers. All right, so, well, you said hackers and, so who are these hackers? What do hackers look like? How do you, I guess, identify or recognize hackers? Like they would look just like any ordinary person. It's not like they have oh. like, like distinct feature that you can tell. So they look like you know, like you and me, you and I. Yeah. Are there some some of these people in this class? Like potentially, yes. Like hopefully. Oh, potentially. Not okay. All right. So hackers are or you know, people who shouldn't have access, they look like ordinary people, okay? All right, uh, what else can we say about this hackers and people that we're trying to protect ourselves from? Vincent, any other features that we can, we should be looking out for so we can know this people, what they look like, or you know, how they, what their behavior is like to help us uh, get an idea? If if we're if we're talking about like behaviors, I'm probably going to come up to you and ask you some like personal information, like, "Hey, when's your birthday?" or like, "Hey, what's your address?" or something like that. Sometimes they're like, they're, they want to get like they want to get enough information so they can they they can know who you are and kind of be like you almost. But Vincent, if I met you today and I said, "Hey, how are you? Or where do you live?" Uh, you know. 
you have any family, you know, parents, you know, what do you like? Does that mean like I'm trying to hack you? Well, uh, so, so, well, it doesn't necessarily mean it. Like if if I if you were like a stranger and I just came, and you just came up to me and asking me all this information, obviously I don't know who you are. I don't I don't have the right to technically trust you. So I'm not going to give you the information. But if you were like a, a colleague or like a friend that knew that knows me really well, then like I I'm, I don't mind sharing it to you because you know me who I am, and I don't really think you would be like oh. I'm gonna be his friend for like two years, and then I'm gonna impersonate him right after where I get his information. All right. So, Vincent, did your parents ever say, "Don't talk to strangers"? Yeah, big time. Okay, don't talk to strangers. Okay. All right. Well, that's. Um, I mean, yeah, you guys are on the right track with that. Uh, you know, people who shouldn't have access. Uh, hackers look like ordinary people. Um, well, these people might be looking for personal information, and especially if they're strangers, something you don't recognize, then you want to be, um, you know, you want to be careful. Okay, so, so that's the, uh, what I'll call the who, right, if I can say that, the who. Now, let's look at the what. Let's look at the what. So... What are we, now we know we're trying to protect from, you know, people like this, you guys have just described. What are we trying, what are we trying to protect? Sindhu, what are we trying to protect from all the strangers here? Personal information. Personal information. Like, what is personal information, Sindhu? Like what? Your social security number, or other identifications. Your social security number, uh, other ID. Okay. Um, Josh, what are you trying to protect from the strangers? So, uh, yeah, it was like the yeah personal information, like for the bank, it's, you know, could be money, you know, people's addresses, um, phone, uh, credit card numbers. Money. Credit card numbers. All right. All right, what else are we trying to protect? A couple more. Sasha, what are you trying to protect from... People who are trying to grab stuff from you. What are you trying to protect? My passport information or visa information. You say well, password? Passport. Oh, passport. Yeah. Like to tra travel passport, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Definitely, I think you want to protect your passport. Okay. All right, one more. A.B., what are you trying to protect from all these folks here? Can you hear me? Sure. Um, I'm trying to think of something that's not any of those. Um, that's, that's, they pretty good, much got everything so far. All right, AB. If you, AB, if you were the boss of a company, yep. What are top three things that you want to protect in that company? Uh, the company data, employee data, and employees, then, like, right? Employees. Yeah. How about employees? Employees. You want to protect your employees, or you don't care about yeah. those guys? No, I want to protect my employees because they're the ones who basically make the company run and also like the product exactly. information. Exactly. So, yeah, I'll, I'll say employees, won't you? Yep. All right. So we got the who. Uh, we got the what. This is just some of it. We could say a lot more. Okay. 
Now let's think of something else here, because you guys are absolutely right. This all this all these um, types of information are crucial. So you want to protect them. That's what we're trying to protect. Okay. Now, next question is, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's call this the where. So let's call this the bad guys. Just use a, you know, just an, a simple word, the bad guys. So the bad guys are trying to get all this information, right? So now the where. Where would the bad guys go or how would the bad guys get access to this information? You know, whatever comes to your mind. Bobby, what do you think? If I'm a bad guy and I'm trying to get this kind of information, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I get it? Well, I guess you could either, you know, if you like search on the internet for people who have like a lot of information. Search them. online. Search online, right? Yep. Okay, like search online, like where? Just do a Google search? Like even like I know sometimes people guess the uh, security questions for people. So like, yeah, like Facebook, will, people will post all their information and all that. And you can start guessing security questions and reset their password. Just spend the whole day and guess people's security questions, right? Maybe yeah. you, hit, you hit the jackpot. Yeah. Okay. How about, how about social media? Now, let me ask you guys a question here. Let's see about social media. So what kind of information can we get on social media? Can you get people's um, first and last names yeah. on social media? Yeah. Okay. How about if somebody is uh, married? Yes. Are you guys, are you, is anybody here? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. How about uh, if somebody has pets? Yes. And the pets' okay. names? Mm-hmm. All right. City how about... Um, location? Say that again? City location? Yep. City slash location. All right. How about uh, where you went to college or where you go to college or high school? Mm. How about that? Uh, you can also siblings, that. family. Okay. Uh, siblings. Family, info, info, all right. How about um, where you work? Job? Yeah. Okay. How about... Um, Interests. How about girlfriend, boyfriend, and stuff like that? Yeah. <laughs> right? BFFs. BFFs, right? Right. Okay. How about, um, how about vacation? Where you, went, where you went on vacation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. How about um, co-workers? Co-workers' names? Yeah. <laughs> All your friends, too. Okay. All right. So, friends. Um, how about... Um, Interest? Yeah. But, well, if I... Say that again. Interest, Interest right? Right. Interest, hobbies, movies, hobbies... Stuff like that. Okay, well, let's stop there. Um, let's add one more here. And this is a term, dumpster diving. Anybody heard this term? Dev Patel, you've heard of dumpster diving? I've heard it, yeah. So what, what, what do you think that is? You know, we're talking about the where. Where can we get all this information from that people are trying to steal? Or, you know, the bad guys. So... What is dumpster diving? It's like uh, they are trying to like uh, steal the information from you and like uh, cheat. I mean, try to hurt you. Mm-hmm. They try to steal information from you from where? From like social media and like other platforms. No, 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 no. I'm asking you about dumpster diving, not social media here. This is a new dumpster diving. What is dumpster diving? I was like, I mean. This what I mean. Uh... Oh, you said dumpster diving is getting information from you on social media. No, 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 no. That's not. That's not what I mean. Oh, what do you? Okay, tell us again. It's about. It's just like um, 
they are trying to get the useful like our useful information like information you know like uh, important information from you yeah that's the thing where are they trying to get this information from is it from the trash i'm guessing i'm at least again like from the trash like stuff stuffing in like yeah, go out yeah from the dumpster from the dumpster from the trash <laughs> like I you guys haven't heard of that you haven't heard of that stuff before I think I have is because like so something my parents do is like if we have like baking information my mom usually makes us shred it before we throw it out so that like people can't get like our our um account infos or like our names or stuff like that so it kind of makes it harder for them to look through the trash when you grow up make sure you're like your mom your mom is very smart <laughs> yeah tell your mom mom when I grow up I want to be just like you <laughs> right <laughs> okay so so dumpster diving is going into trash to get stuff. Now, when you throw trash away, when you put trash in the curb or you throw it away, uh, Eduardo, who owns that trash? Let's say you put all your trash in the trash barrel and you put it on the street, right? Ready for pickup. Who owns that trash in that, you know, on the street? Uh, legally, uh, I I think if it is in your property, it's still yours. But uh, no, no, no. It's, you put it on the street, you know, like on the sidewalk, right? Uh, I think that is no. If it's there, anyone can go there and take it. That's what they do with celebrities. So <coughs> that's what they do with who? With who? Celebrities. <laughs> celebrities, right? Well, you're right. Once you put the trash out there, it belongs to whoever wants it. Like you can't, you can't arrest somebody for taking your trash. It's like it belongs to anybody who wants it. Okay, so let's talk about what's in the trash. What can we find, Eduardo? Give us the first one. What can we possibly find in somebody's trash? What can we find in there? Uh, you can find. Especially your address, letters, uh, you can find documents. Okay, uh, wait, 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 slow down. So you can find somebody's address in there, right? You can find your uh, document. Address? What kind of document? Any documents that could be related. Your, could like be what? Your social security, your bank statement, could be anything. Okay. So, social yeah. security number, bank statements. Okay. Um, your habits. Justin. Like Justin, what can we find in trash? Eduardo says SSN, bank statements. Yep. What can we? What else can we find? Justin, are you there? I just called Justin and Justin just disappeared from this platform. Let's go to Summer. Summer, what can we find in the trash? You can find like pay stubs. Um, pay stubs. Pay stubs. All right, what else? Receipts and like receipts from like ATMs or like receipts would have like your bank card number on it too. Okay, we'll have your bank, um, some bank info. All right. Um, okay. What else can we find? Anybody? Any other thing? Your emails. Email. Wait, you put your email in the trash? Uh, well, no, but like sometimes when you uh, have. How a, do you put your email in the uh, trash? Right, all right. Like, f funny story. Basically, I put an email for an order and I threw out the receipt. My girlfriend had the receipt and she randomly emailed me. So that's the thing. Oh, 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 like your email address. Right, right, right. Oh. I was like, how does email get in the trash? Okay. <laughs> email, okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Well, this is for real. How about, um, how about old checks? You know, check, uh, check stubs or, actually, I think someone said pay stubs, you know, things like that. You okay. Well, old debit cards. What's that? Once people get rid of their debit or credit cards, sometimes if they don't cut them up, they just throw them in the trash. Or yep, debit cards, debit slash credit. 
cards. All right. Come on, help me with the spelling. Okay. Well, now, believe it or not, you guys are absolutely right. Um, and when you go into those other classes that I mentioned, you're going to go into more detail. But you see, the thing is, we have all these different people, right, uh, who are trying to get your information. We call them basic. The terms that you use for people like this are unauthorized, right? People who are unauthorized to gain information are trying to gain information. You know, I don't, I don't like to use the word hacking because hacking is not a bad thing. You know, because uh, when you say oh, somebody's hacking, it's like, oh, it's a bad thing. I know, the word, I know the word means a bad person or doing a bad thing. But hacking itself, I mean, Summer, let me go back to you. If your neighbor says, oh, Summer, I hear you're in IT, right? Well, my computer, I lost my passport, my laptop. Could you just, you know, do what you guys do? You're like, oh, sure, I can help you out, but I have to break into it. You're like, she's like, sure, help me out. So you hack into that laptop. Well, Summer, is she going to call the police and say, well, my neighbor just broke into my laptop? Well, like, she probably could. Um... No, she invited you to do that. Is she going to call the police on you? Well, you never know people. She always could and then lie, but... Okay, well, let's say just a normal person, right? <laughs> you know, like a normal person who says, help me out. They're not going to call the police. Because yeah. you help them out, and they're like, wow, thanks. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so just, you know, I mean, we, of course, we have people who go to extremes. But, you know, we're talking about just normal people here. All right. So, um, so the, the point is, uh, you become a sort of bad, uh, bad person if you're not authorized. You just go to your neighbor's house or like somebody said, you break into the bank, then you're, you know, that's illegal, right? You're not authorized. I mean, you can walk in a company, you can walk in a bank, in a hospital, in a restaurant. The fact that you walk there doesn't mean you have access to everything there. So there's some things that you may not be authorized to do. That's what we're talking about. People like that, you have no authority. It doesn't mean that you are a, quote, bad person. It just means that you're trying to access stuff that you, sh you don't have any authority or permission to access. Now, we'll talk about what, all this information here, absolutely, this is what people are trying to get their hands on. Now, the where, where do you get the information from? Here's some, here's social media. Now, the problem we're talking about here is uh, with social media and dumpster diving, right? You're, you have, this is what people, um, should I say, people, people give up their own information for free. So on social media, I mean, look at all the information you can find about somebody on social media. You don't have to break into their house. Just go on social media and just, you know, just have your Gatorade right next to you and you're sipping your Gatorade and you're getting all the information you need. Right? Um, so we give up all this information willingly by ourselves. And you see, the idea of security, when we talk about security here, now, if you're in the 443 or 444 class, well, I always tell my students, you're going, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff here. I don't want you to be afraid or to be fearful or to feel like the world is coming to an end. But the kind of stuff that we discuss in those classes are real stuff, like things that actually happen. I mean, the kind of tools that people use to break in, um, the kind of gimmicks and tricks that people use, I mean, email, all kinds of email scams that are used, and everybody falls for it, right? I mean, you guys have done your discussions for the last, you know, many, many weeks, and you've seen stuff that is happening out there that people have to deal with. You know, 50, 60% of what IT security people deal with is email issues. So when you put out your information, out there for free, that is easy access for people who are into stuff like this. Dumpster diving. So let me tell you guys what happened. Uh, about two years ago, uh, the 444 class, 
that's the network security two class, uh, what we call the hacking class. We had a field experiment on campus, right? A field exercise. Well, that field exercise kind of went bad a little bit because, you know, we didn't follow all the rules of the school. So we got into trouble a little bit. But bottom line is the, the whole assignment was go out there, go into all the trash you can find on campus, right? And look for what you think is valuable information to somebody who's trying to, you know, impersonate somebody, steal information, whatever you call it, right? Look in the trash, dumpster diving. So that was the, so you bring it back to class and we are going to review it for class demonstration only. Not to do anything bad, but we want to use it as a field exercise. So we did that. Some of the stuff that we found when we came back to class was totally unbelievable. Totally unbelievable, guys. So some I just mentioned pay stubs. We found a check, like an actual check, somebody's paycheck. Now, paychecks, I mean, checks generally um, don't expire for like six months, right? So we found this check. It was about 200 and something dollars on the check. It was signed and everything. And it had just been around for about two months. So whoever had the check, uh, the paycheck, put in the trash for whatever reason, I don't know. But the check still had about four months on the check where you could go and cash it before it expires. An actual check. Right? We saw prescriptions, like CVS, Walgreens prescriptions. Now on your prescription, what are you gonna see on your prescription? You're gonna see your medical record number, maybe your doctor's information, maybe your insurance information, and such valuable stuff like that. We found it in the trash. We find all kinds of um, you know, printed, you know, classroom rosters, all kinds of stuff, right? It was pretty shocking to everyone in the class. So now you may not go into security, you know, in the, in the IT field, or you may end up in security. Well, if you do end up in security, this is a big deal, right? Now, when you think about it, 99% of the time, everything is fine, right? I mean, most people you deal with are okay. I mean, like, you know, 99% of people you deal with, no problem. In fact, Maybe your emails, 95%, 99% of your emails are fine. But we're talking about the 1%, the little, little percent of people, emails and stuff like that, that is that little percentage that can give you problems. And that is what security, network security and information security is all about. It's trying to develop strategies where IT security people know how to identify, how to protect information. You want to know what is the bad guy's, you know, what we call an MO, right? Modus operandi, what is their OMI, MO, how do they operate? I need to know how they operate so that I can know how to be prepared, right? So, so everything you guys talked about here, this is for real, you know, email addresses, all debit credit cards, pay stubs, all that stuff, valuable information to people who are trying to do bad stuff, right? And so what we put in the trash, what we put on social media, this stuff can be potentially, potentially in the hands of the wrong people, right? In the hands of people who have money, who have time, who have resources, but who also have zero conscience, right? Like they have zero conscience. They don't care. They don't care about you. So they have all these resources to do stuff they need to do. They have a lot of tools and they have zero conscience. So these people will look in your social media, um, We'll look, we'll try to guess your security questions and stuff. We'll look in your dumpster, looking for valuable information, right? They may not find everything. I mean, the way it works is you don't always find everything, but if you have something, I mean, you might know the pet names from social media, right? If the person is married, you call the, you call the wife uh, and say, oh, 
you know, I'm a friend of Bob, you know, of your husband. Uh, we went to school together. Really? What school? Well, it's on social media. So you say, oh, went to this high school. And in fact, right now, you know, he works at this company and, you know, we've done business together. So you provide all this information. Sounds like you actually know the person. See, if you have the right strategies, uh, there's a lot of stuff that people do every day to get what they're looking for from the public. Like every day, it happens, it happens all the time because people are not trained. People are not trained on security, on what to do, what to look out for. So this is a very important field. In fact, uh, people who work in security get paid a lot of money because A, you are protecting valuable, if I recall all this information here, we call all these things assets, right? They are called assets because what are assets? Assets are valuable things to you and to your company, to your family, that if you lose that asset, you might lose a lot. I mean, you have, it's going to be very costly, very painful maybe. It's going to cost you a lot of problems. For example, if you lose your laptop, you just somehow you lost your laptop, you went on the train and you forgot the laptop there and you never find it again. Well, that's going to be very, you're going to lose a lot of stuff depending on what you have on that laptop. Right? So, so some, this is just some background information um, of the kind of topics that we cover in this course. And this particular chapter is just to give you an intro, right? Just a general, we're not going to go so deep at all, but it's just to give you a kind of an you know, intro into the idea of security. It's a very serious topic. Um, that a lot of people are not aware of. And especially if you're in networking and if you're going to go into this field, uh, you want to have a lot of information about what it is you're going to be dealing with um, in the future, maybe on the job, for example. All right, so good points uh, from you guys there. Let's go on. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, some of the details we're going to be covering, um, you know, in the future course, but, you know, for this particular chapter here. So, actually, let me go to the next slide. All right, so the next slide here talks about security, about policies, right? If you work in a company or if you work in a company or not, or maybe you've heard about it, well, a policy, like it says here, is a document, right, it's kind of like, you know, a law. Like you have a law, for example, you know, if you, if you drive, uh, you go over the speed limit on the highway, well, you might get into trouble with the police. So that's kind of like a law, right? So in a company or in an office, in a business, you have policies that are developed by the company. Those policies are rules that guide how you behave in the company. You know, I've said this many times, I'm not sure if I said it to you guys, that when you are on the job, right, believe it or not, you have zero privacy when you're on the job. Like, whatever you do on your company, whatever you do on company time, you, in a sense, you know, this might sound a bit kind of off for, to say this, but the company owns you while you work for the company. Everything you do, right? Um, I mean, part of my job when I worked as a professional, as an IT professional, was to, I, I mean, was to monitor my staff, like, all the time. I could just come, into, I could come to your desk and say, uh, hey, um, Summer, could you just go for a walk? I need to look at your computer. And you have no choice. And I could look at your computer and whatever you were doing, that was my job. Or I could go into your email and look at your email, depending on what, you know, what, what exactly I was looking for. That was my job. And so when you get into that company, you signed a policy or you signed a couple of documents that says, I work for this company, I'm responsible, blah, 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 blah. Basically, the company, quote, unquote, owns you. And so you're responsible for whatever you do while you're on that job. Right. 
Uh, I could always talk about that later, but that's just to summarize that idea there. That when you're on the job, whatever you do is, you know, your employer has a right to get into your business when you're on company time. And so, you know, you don't say things like, well, I know I work for this company, but hey, I have a right to do X, Y, Z, you know, when I'm in the office, that's my private time. Well, I don't know about that. Anyway, so the policies are going to tell you what is acceptable and what is not. All right. And most times, uh, staff members are required to sign and say, I got the document. I read the document. I get it. Okay. You signed it. Right. So there are documents that describe what you can do, what you can do. And when you, and it also tells you, well, here are the, uh, uh, here's what happens, right, if you break this policy. If you don't comply with this policy, here is what's going to happen, right? There is a certain, you know, penalty that you pay. You might get suspended. You might even get, you might lose your job. You might lose your job, right, uh, depending on what the policy says. So now when we talk specifically about security policies, uh, security policies are based on what we call models, right? Uh, so, and here's one of those models that uh, uh, the security professionals look at when you're trying to build a security policy for a company. One of those models here is referred to as the CIA triad, right here. CIA triad, not the CIA of the federal government, just basically stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability, all right? So it's a kind of a model of security experts go into detail and they build their security policies on this kind of a model, right? And the model simply says there are three things there, right? Confidentiality of information basically means that, like it describes here in this diagram, is when you prevent, you know, preventing unauthorized access or disclosure, right, of information, right? You maintain the confidentiality of information systems, information networks, information resources, is to, is to prevent unauthorized disclosure or, you know, basically saying, People who are not authorized should have no business going there or looking at that. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. No. It means that you have no, for example, uh, back to some of the example we just talked about. If you go to your neighbor's house, nobody invited you there just by yourself. You just go in there and you start you know, breaking into the computers. Well, no, you are not authorized to do that. So you're going to get in trouble. But if your neighbor calls you and says, oh, I heard you're good in IT. I need help with my password. I lost my password. Could you maybe break into this computer and help me get it? And you're like, sure, I can help you with that. Well, you have been given the authority or the permission to do that. That's a good thing. You're helping somebody else, right? The other part is integrity. Integrity is when you, when you can verify that this piece of information or this system or device has not been compromised. That is, it has not been accessed by unauthorized persons or in any way, in any authorized way. So you maintain the confidentiality and integrity of the system. Now, the third part there, availability, that's a, that's, that presents a challenge, right, for security people. And here's what, here's what basically that means, right? So let me give an example, maybe help you understand. Um, let's see, Brandon, are you there? Brandon? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So think about this, Brandon, right? Um, so the IT guys, you know, UMass Boston decide, well, we've had too many email issues it looks like everyone is not taking this stuff seriously. So we want to make security stronger, okay, for all our emails and stuff. So 
from next semester, every day, everyone's going to change their password. Every day, every day, every day, every 24 hours, your password expires, you got to change it. And not only that, your new passwords must be 16 characters long and have a combination of, you know, uppercase, lowercase, special characters and stuff like that. Would, you, would that be a thumbs up for you or what? Would that be cumbersome, you said? No, no, the question is, what, what, I mean, what would Sorry. be your reaction to that kind of, um, if they came up with that kind of a uh, thing? Uh, I would think that it would be a hassle to have to do that every single day, personally. Okay. Well, I think that most people will probably react that way. So what has happened if that was, you know, what has, what has happened with that example is the security people are trying to maintain the confidentiality and integrity, right, of the email systems and stuff like that, but they're not making it available. You see, the availability means that people who need to use that system or information, right, People who are authorized can use it without stress, so to speak, without being totally stressed out to gain access to it, right? So Brandon, so what I'm talking about is if there's a requirement where you go to change your password every day, well, that is going to be almost impossible to do. And so the system is going to be secure, but nobody can get into it because it's just too hard to use. You can't even remember your password. Now you've got to change it again every day. Too much of a hassle. So that's the availability part there. And security people are always trying to deal with the issue of granting access at the same time, securing that particular you know, information or system or device. There's always it's always, it's hard to balance it. Sometimes it's quote unquote too much security and nobody can do anything or people are just frustrated or there's no security and people can just do whatever they want, right? I mean, sometimes you want to get into a website and you want, to, you want it to be secure. So you, people have to, you know, multi-factor authentication. You need to check the code on your phone, but then you're like, oh, well, what happens if I don't have my phone with me? This is too stressful, right? So you're trying to protect a platform. You're also trying to make sure that people can access it without too much stress. So that's this model here called the CIA triad um, that a lot of security people have to look at. And when they build their security policies, right, they're able to, you know, pick out uh, different ideas and come up with a policy that addresses all these different areas. Brandon, does it kind of make sense? The CIA trial thing? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Um, so policies again, uh, just to go over that one more time, policies, Okay, let me show you an example here. So I'm going to put this, I can just do a quick search here. Um, there's a SAN security policy template. Now, so when you're building policies, let me share with this with you guys, put in the chat. All right, so you might want to bookmark that. So here is, um, Here's an organization that gives us, you know, policies that are like, you know, industry standard policies. For example, if you go to network security here and you're trying to find a policy, uh, you know, for, it depends on what it is, but let's say, for example, here, we have a policy for uh, what wireless communication policy, right? Let's see what the policy looks like. So if you haven't seen the policy before, a policy is, is an actual document, right? It's a, you know, it's a printed document that, you know, your company is going to provide to you or you provide to your staff. And, you know, you read the stuff. It has all these different parts of it uh, right here. So it gives you an overview. It says with the mass explosion, right, of smartphones and tablets, 
Pervasive wireless connectivity is almost a given. So insecure wireless configuration can provide an easy open door. So you come up with your policy purpose, right? Um, the purpose of this policy is to secure and protect the information assets owned by the company. All right? Uh, the company grants access to these resources as a privilege and must manage them responsibly to maintain the confidentiality, integrity, and the ability. I mean, just look at that, right? We just talked about the CIA trial. I didn't even, I just picked this randomly, but you can see that information is there clearly, right? To maintain the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of all information assets. AB, you recognize this, what we just read now, from what we just discussed? Can you repeat the question? It's not a question. I didn't ask the question. Do you recognize what I just highlighted here? To maintain the confidentiality, integrity, and available. Yep, we just talked about that earlier, well, in the beginning. Um, exactly. So, you know, this is like, you know, it's used all around the industry. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, it's right there. You guys can see that. All right, so when you're developing the policy, then you have, uh, so you, you specify details, right, of, you know, what the, comp what the policy is going to cover. Right here, it says the scope, right? All employees, contractors, consultants, temporary workers, everyone who is covered under that policy who have to, you know, follow the policy. Uh, then you state your policy requirements here, right? Uh, you say um, all all wireless infrastructure devices that reside at the company uh, and connect uh, must follow these rules here. You must abide by the standards speci specified in the wireless communication standard. It must be installed, supported, maintained by an approved support team, uh, maintain a hardware address, MAC address that can be registered and tracked, not interfere. So it's, you know, it's pretty detailed, right, when you go into it. So this might be your job one day to draft a policy just go and look for policies that are already out there. You can modify it a little bit. Now, also right here, it says non-compliance, right? If you don't comply with the policy, well, what can happen here? An employee may be subject to disciplinary action. You can be fired if you don't follow the policy, if you don't abide by the policy. All right, so that's an example of what a policy looks like. And you have different types of policies depending on what exactly the purpose is. And you have privacy policies, internet use, access, you know, depending on what it is. So you can bookmark that and take a look at it later. All right, so here are the questions that we just asked, you know, when we started in terms of, you know, questions you ask yourself as a security person, what must be, what am I trying to protect? You know, what do we need to protect? Um, you know, what are the threats? What are the threats that we face? What kind of tools do we need to put in place, right? These questions, security people are always asking these questions, uh, trying to come up with solutions, all right? Now, you're going to find in, um, you know, when you're talking about security, you're always going to deal with a couple of things, right? You're going to deal with malware. It's like a huge part of, it's a huge security threat. There's always, you know, viruses and worms and, ransomware, things like that, right? Malware. So that's always an issue. So you're going to see that the policy is going to address that, that matter. You're also going to address backups, right? Backup, backing up your files. It's a huge security um, concern. Backing up backup procedures. Companies need to have backup procedures in case of theft of their information in case of things like ransomware, power outages that might destroy systems, that's very much a part of it, all right? Then this note what you see here, this note basically says, talks about the information on a kind of on a resource. So for example, you have a laptop, like I said earlier, the information in your laptop may be more valuable than the actual laptop itself. Some things are easily replaceable, right? Uh, Bobby, are you there? 
Yep. All right. So some things are easily replaceable. What do you think about that? If you had a flash drive, well, how much does a flash drive cost? Probably only ten dollars now. Okay. Now, how about the information that might be on your flash drive? Can you put a dollar value to it? No, because sometimes it might not be replaceable. So that's what we're trying to talk about here. There's some things that uh, you're trying to, you're trying, like it says here, it's it's more valuable than the actual physical asset. So you're not you're not upset that you lost your lap, uh, you lost your flash drive. You can always buy one, but you're upset because whoa, I've had this information for like five years. Where am I going to get that information from? All right, uh, or you know, you write a password on a piece of paper and you stick it on your you know, computer monitor. That paper is probably worthless, but the password on that paper, uh, now you're talking about some serious information. So that's what that note is about there, right? When we're talking about security, we've got to remember that sometimes um, the devices that we're, that we're protecting um, are not the actual assets. It's the stuff in there, right? The employees, I mean, you might, you might, I mean, if you lose an employee, you can get an employee. But how about all the training and experience and value that employee brings to a company, right? You can't just, you can't hire somebody for that. That takes time to develop. So you can hire a new employee, but that you're going to have to invest all that stuff uh, even the trust you have in your employees, right? You got to you got to invest a lot of stuff to bring people to that level. All right. Okay. Uh, let's talk about this part here. So we're talking about threats to information security. Um, Freddie, are you there? What can you see here is the greatest threat? to information security? Uh, probably human error or failure. So can you give us an example of, you know, like everyday, you know, things that human beings do, you know, what we call stupid stuff? They could leave a sticky note with their password on their computer or just leave it unlocked. Yep. Uh, that's more common that we know. Well, that's, that's, that's crazy because you, I mean, you go, I mean, you, I mean, you do that, you, you leave the office, you go home, somebody gets into your office, they see the password, even if they were not thinking about it before, well, now you've given them something to think about. Like, hey, here's my password right there. Very easy to see. That's a human error. And that can be very costly, very costly indeed. Um, Sindhu, what other example do you say is, uh, you know, like a human error, you know, things that people do that might cause us problems? Um, maybe like writing your password somewhere. Sindhu, did you hear what um, Fred, Freddie just said? Fred just said exactly the same thing. So why are you repeating that? Uh, is that is that like that's like the greatest that's like the most common thing, right? Yeah. Okay, think of something else. Imagine yourself you walk in security. What are the kind of things that you're afraid that people are gonna do? Um maybe like share information that you're not supposed to. With someone by accident. Like what? Like what? What kind of information? Like um, the company's like details. Like what? And you need to be specific. What kind um, of information would you share with an outside person that may be a problem for the company? Like um, their financial information. Like what? We made 50 billion last year. Something like that? Yeah. 
if you tell a stranger that you guys made a lot of money, that's a, is that a security problem? Mm. I want you guys to think about this. Are you a good example? Uh, Will? Yeah. Give us a good example of what might be an error. We've, we've talked about people leaving their passwords on their computers, on paper. What else do you think? Sindhu said financial information, but I need, I need something else. I would think like a typo or just some sort of error in the security software itself that may have gone undetected. So like if a, like if there's no current update, something like that. Yeah, like there's bug, some sort of, of like those things. back door into it or something along those lines. Okay. How about with email? Any issue with email you can think about? Uh, this uh, happen. Oh, yeah. Like, Links in emails, right? Yeah, so like phishing attacks, someone sends like a link that if someone clicks on it, they, 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 uh, that person gains access to their system and like the company's and business information. So like they can start stealing information and using it for like blackmails or sell it on like the dark web or something like that, you know? In fact, you know what, Vincent? It's a good thing. It, let me let me show you something I just got <laughs> today. I just got this email like literally today. Okay. So let me show. I'm going to show you guys. I got it in my you you must um, email. So where is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, I think I I. God, I hope I didn't delete it. I'm sure I, got, I did. I got like a good example. Oh, right there. <laughs> oh, okay, that's it right there. This is it. <laughs> Okay, you guys can see this, right? Yeah. All right. So tell me what is wrong with this email. I just got this email today. Oh, is it today? Yeah, today. Uh, what is wrong with this email? Is anything wrong with this email? It's probably not actually Amazon. Yeah, I don't think Amazon has like the icon as Amazon.com as their actual what they look like. And then, yeah, the email blocks.com all right so it's um amazon dot um orders dot it dot support dot email blocks is that email blocks like b l o x yeah yeah uh, all right but you think that what i'll call what i'll call the average person you think the average person will know you know that this is not the correct email no they will probably think it's like an actual email from amazon which is convincing to them. And then they're going to like click that order number that's highlighted right there. And then that person who sent that email has information on their console. Where so what it says here, it says, click, it says, didn't place this order, click on the order number to view details about this order. <laughs> so you click on this link here and boom, that's the end of your, of your digital life maybe. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just saw this and I thought of myself, first thing I thought of myself is I didn't order anything from Amazon, you know, and suddenly I'm not going to spend $269 on Amazon buying, buying what? A D-Link extreme gigabit wireless router, right? Mm. And besides what is, what is this part for, right? This part that says, Miscellaneous eighty nine ninety four. What is that? Is that is that an extra charge? Because you know, where's that? You know, it, there's a few things there, and you see when you're on the job, this is the kind of thing that might be your job to show examples to staff members and say, guys, just like you said now, this may not be the actual uh, what you might call it, the actual like logo. Okay, let me see. I think I got something from Amazon recently. Maybe I can find their actual logo there. Yeah, because you know, you gotta show people examples of what might be real or fake. Uh let's see. A M Z. Alright, so let's see an actual Amazon order. Alright, so here's an actual Amazon order here. Uh let me click on it and then let's compare a little bit. So this is the real and this is the fake. All right, so look at that, right? So this is the 
real. And so you guys are right. I don't think there's ever a dot com. There's no dot com there, right? Right, there's no dot com. You guys see this? Yeah. And then when you look at the email, so you look at the email address. So this is, um, even though down here it says, um, since this email message was sent from a notification only, blah, blah, blah. But here, if you look at the email, you can see that it's um, order-update. That It has the Amazon.com there, right? But here, there's just, look at that. Bogus. <laughs> right? Pretty bogus. And also, something else, if you hover over, you see, if you hover over the link, don't click the link. Hover over the link and look at the bottom left. You see the bottom left of the screen? If you guys, it's a little bit tiny. But if you look at the bottom left, it points you like some totally extreme place. Has nothing to do with Amazon at, at all. Nothing. You guys can see that? Right. Authorized. It goes to authorized notifications.com slash blah, blah, blank, blank, blank. Huh. So... So there are a few um, there are a few flags there that you can look at to to know that it's especially you got to ask yourself did I order anything from the company? That's the first thing you got to ask yourself, right? Did I order anything? Right. I had a friend who told me that um, you know he fell for this kind of scams because he was curious. Like I didn't order this stuff, but I'm just curious. Let me just click on the link and check. And his, his life was literally turned upside down. Like, like literally, he got into so much problems with his bank and with his laptop, it, was, it took him a while to resolve the whole thing. Okay. That's the end of the movie, guys. <laughs> back, to school, yeah. back to class. So, so human errors. Uh, like you said, also, you might be software failures. Um, you know, old software, old technologies, software attacks, it might be forces of nature, right? These are all threats to information security that information security people are always trying to, um, you know, protect against, reduce the likelihood that stuff is going to happen. But suddenly, human error, people clicking on links, people sharing information, like Sindhu said, um, you know, Leaving documents, you know, with vital information. That stuff is serious. All right, so you're always talking about best practices, right? Best practices, like what are, how are we to manage our IT security? You know, what are the recommended ways? Like I said, a lot of times we have documentation from, you know, from um, from organizations that put out a lot of useful resources. And so a lot of times you just got to go grab those resources um, in a company and update them for your own use, right? Um, but best practices, you know, what's the best way, what's recommended way to protect a computer room, for example, right? Uh, to, you know, wireless, you know, APs, what's the best way to preserve APs? Well, if there is a disaster, there's a flood, right? There is an outage or, you know, ransomware, you have the ransomware problem. What are the best practices? And just like you guys have done throughout the semester in, you know, discussing the current news events in the IT world, well, some of those, some of that information is helpful because it tells you what the experts do about those problems. Like, what does the federal government recommend? What does the FBI recommend? What do the, you know, what do the experts recommend? Those are what we call best practices, things that have been done, tried, and tested, and it's now recommended for you to follow those same procedures, right? So it might be things like, you know, locks on the doors, special kinds of locks. Uh, it might be, you know, I don't know, depending on the servers or wireless workstations, you've got to look at best practices in the industry. And it might be your job one day 
to recommend to your boss, well, why don't we do this here? I read about this, um, you know, this new thing, and I think it's going to help us out, right? You see, that's, that's one of the ways to advance on the job, is to make yourself extra valuable, right? That is, you know, people say that you get paid, um, you know, what you're, what you're paid is what you're worth. But you got to sometimes you got to do more than you're paid for. That's how you get paid more for the value you bring to the job. See, I'm always talking about the job because, hey, you guys are going to end there, in a, you know, end up on the job in a couple of years or less or more. So that's why you're going through this course, because it's setting you up for what you're going to be doing down the road. So when you start making your big box, uh, you guys got to remember me, right? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so let's see what else we got. Like I said, this is just a this chapter is just intro into the main four four three course in uh, intro, uh, network security. So we're just kind of going on the surface of a lot of things here. So the next class we're going to have uh, we're going to go into detail about some you know some of these areas authentication and authorization, right? Uh, that is what that is. You know, how do you grant permissions, the kind of permissions that are granted uh, to a person, to a device, to a system, right? So that that system or person has to authenticate. In fact, you know, we need to even understand the word. Those are two different words, right? Authentication, authorization, and there's another word, identification. So you have identification first, then you have authentication, then you have authorization. Identification is when you basically produce evidence that you are who you say you are. Authentication is when we verify that that evidence, right, is actually tied to you. So you present your evidence and we say, okay, we're gonna check out the evidence to be sure that, hey, you're who you say you are. Now, once we check out the evidence, the identification, and we, or that's what we call, when we authenticate you, that is authenticate means that we are checking out your identification. Then we give you authority to do what you've got to do. You are now granted authorization to do what you've got to do. So those are two different words. Sometimes we use them interchangeably or we just use the words without fully understanding, but in a technical sense, they mean different things. So you go look at encryption, uh, VPNs, malware protection, um, and then, you know, when we go through these topics, it will give us a general sense of what uh, security requires. You know, a security, somebody on the job as a security professional has some, um, has some responsibilities, right, to the staff, to the company, um, in, in terms of the kind of things you're trying to protect. And, we, you know, when we looked at it earlier, we mentioned all this stuff here, right? So when people put information out, you know, the, the who, the what, the where are very critical to, and then of course, bottom line is the policy that you come up with. The bottom line policy of how do we come up with a policy that is going to properly direct our company, right? Now, you never have 100% security. I mean, if somebody says, well, I want to hire you, Right, um, so you can provide a hundred percent protection for the company. There's that, that's an important. There's no you cannot do a job like that. There's no job like a hundred percent security where you provide that, right? But security people are always trying to reduce the impact, right? You're trying to reduce the impact of any kind of an attack. Right, you want to be you want to be sure that it doesn't achieve its full goal. So you're trying to reduce the impact, right, of any such attacks and stuff like that. And you, it's a continuous, continuous. You're not going to eliminate everything because you always have bad people. You're always going to have bad people doing bad stuff, and so you're always coming up with strategies and knowledge so you can do your job effectively. All right. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, we'll continue the rest in the next lecture. 
Let's go to the attendance. And if you have any questions, um, let me know. Uh, we have, we have, by the end, end of next week is the last uh, week we're going to have. Next week is the last, is the last week for lectures. Next week, because we're going to be done with chapter nine this week. Next week, we're going to talk about cloud. That's another kind of like off topic, so to speak. Uh, but not, not, exact, not entirely off topic because, you know, IT, everything is in the cloud. Things have been moved to the cloud, virtualization and things like that. So we're going to cover a bit of that in chapter 10. Right. So the final question I have for you guys is, is any of you here requiring extra credit to boost your grades? Anybody here? Yeah, I'll take extra credit. I missed the assignment. I want free extra credit. Heck yeah. Sure, I'll take extra credit. So let me tell you, so let me tell you about extra credit. Two things. One, because somebody asked me, well, what do I get for extra credit? Your extra credit gives you about, I think it gives you about two points, which you can add to your final grade. So if your final grade is say, a, I don't know, 84, right? The letter grade for 84 is, uh, is that a B or something? I think so. If you have two, say that again? I think it's a B. <laughs> okay, so if you have two points from your extra credit, but well, that moves you to 86. Well, that's that's higher than a B. So, so that's what your extra credit can do for you. So, if you require extra credit anyway, you got to send me an email. You got to email me and say, you know, subject line, professor, I need extra credit. Um, help me, whatever. Send me extra credit. Just put extra credit in there, in the subject line, and then I will respond to you. All right. Uh, it's going to be due, you know, you have kind of, you have some time to do it. It's usually due by the deadline of the final exam, which is like in a few weeks, a few weeks away. So you have a lot of time to work on that. Um, and then we also sometimes will have a final review of the final exam. That is totally optional. So the proposed date for that is the 11th of May. It's a Tuesday, right? And it depends on who, you know, who wants to be in class. It's optional. I know when we say things are optional, nobody shows up. So if nobody's going to show up, then hey, I'm not going to show up myself. So, but if the class says, hey, we want to do a review, a class review, or I can just give you the review like the midterm, and you can just do that by yourself. So I got to know, we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, when we get to that, you know, go, get closer to that point. So a few kind of like announcement things there for the extra credit for the final and for the last lecture, which is going to be next week. All right. So if you have questions, let me know. But let's do the attendance first. What options do you see uh, for the attendance? I got 4.0, 0 0.4, 40, 